We're now joined by Dori Gramalik from the National Institute of Environmental Sciences. Dori, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much for the invitation. What relation is there between COVID-19 and toxicology? So in our efforts to combat SARS-CoV-2, we need to learn everything we can about the virus, from sequencing its genome to understanding what will interfere with its replication or its spread. Toxicology relates because we understand that an organism's response to infectious disease, neoplasia, um, other threats depend on how well um, we can mount an immune response, and that these responses can be modified by things like chronic low-level exposures to chemical or physical factors, uh, other things in the environment. As an immunotoxicologist, I believe that chronic low-level exposure to um, uh, background levels of chemicals or um, immune suppression can lead to an increased burden of disease. That can occur on an individual basis, so for example with things like substance abuse, um, or it can occur on a population level. So for example there's a large body of evidence that um, there have been increased infections or altered vaccine responses following exposure to PCBs or um, some perfluorinated compounds in the environment. And the immune system can be uniquely sensitive to persistent environmental pollutants. How can toxicologists help with COVID-19? So as toxicologists, we have a role in understanding the safety of novel therapeutics, and this includes both small molecules and biologics, such as the mRNA vaccines that have been recently approved to fight the pandemic. And on an environmental side, we seek to understand how exogenous stressors alter the immune response. From the perspective of an immunotoxicologist, um, this can mean uh, either augmentation of the immune response, which we understand as allergy or autoimmunity, um, or immune suppression. It's interesting that there's a developing body of literature that suggests that um, in patients with so-called long COVID who have persistent symptoms, following infection, that this may do, be due to autoimmune-like phenomenon. And it'll be interesting um, if this is a question that perhaps toxicologists can tease out to sort out whether there's a genetic or environmental component to this. Where are you with the COVID-19 research? First phase, looking at susceptibilities with age and gender ethnicity. Second phase, exposure to air pollution, cigarette smoke. Where are you? Yep. So our work examining um, is examining the role of susceptibility factors in the immune response to SARS-CoV-2. And in the first phase, we're looking at how intrinsic variation in susceptibility factors such as age, gender, and ethnicity affect the in vitro immune responses to viral antigens. So we're doing this using human peripheral blood leukocytes that we're obtaining from a large number of donors and we're going to investigate immune function in the cells obtained from this peripheral blood. So in the second phase of our own work, we're going to be conducting in vitro toxicology studies to assess how exposures to things like polyaromatic hydrocarbons, which can be found in environmental tobacco smoke, domestic and wildfires, vehicle exhaust, and other air pollution, can modulate the immune response to viral peptides. There's a large body of data from in, in vivo studies, um, including mixtures work ongoing here at the NIEHS, that's shown that these compounds are immunosuppressive and can affect disease resistance. So we'll be using these compounds in our studies, and we plan to begin that work um, the second phase, sort of late in 2021. Dory, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed speaking with you.